Hello and welcome back to Single Mall Love. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jasmine and I post videos on cocktail recipes and bar reviews. This video goes right back to why it all started. The reason why I started this channel, my love for single malls. So join me on a very special journey that I'm going to take you guys to every possible distillery tour in the world. I'm so proud to start my very first distillery tour here in my hometown, Goa, where Paul John has set up his single malt. So guys, let's get going. So guys, we are here at the John Distilleries here in South Goa and I'll be going to the reception and let's see where they're gonna take us starting with the two in a while. So stay tuned guys, let's get going. Hi guys, well, welcome to Paul John Vista Center. My name is Pankaj Poon, I'm the Vista Center Manager here and it will be my pleasure to walk you around the distillery okay. and we'll see how the whiskey is made. So, so thank you. Me. Yeah. So guys, uh, let's see how water is turned into whiskey. Follow me guys, let's get going. Now we are heading towards the granary okay. wherein uh, we store the barley. So we'll see how a barley looks like and we'll find out a little more about the barley as well. So do you all import the barley or oh, no. is it a, like what is it? Oh, well, no. From where so you bring your barley? Uh, there's a reason why we are called the Great Indian Single Malt. Okay. Uh, all of our ingredients are sourced within India. So there are three ingredients in our whiskies, barley, water and yeast and Correct. all of them have been sourced in India. So this is a pure Please. Indian barley? Yeah, yeah. Wow, like from the foothills of Himalayas. Oh, really? Oh, that's that's nice to know. So, uh, from you take this and uh, then it so, goes up to the. So, like I said, uh, there are three ingredients in our whiskies: barley, water, and yeast. Yeah. All right. So, barley is grown only in the northern part of India, like I mentioned, the foothills of Himalayas. Foothills of Himalayas. Yeah. So, one of the unique things about our barley is the fact that we prefer the six-row barley. Okay. Whereas most of your distillers in Scotland and other distillers in India, they prefer the two-row barley. Okay. So, so this, there are, this is a variation in the barley right barley, now? Barley, exactly. Understand. So the six-row barley has got a thicker husk due to which there's more protein in our barley. Okay. So you've tasted our whiskeys before I and you know it's got a lot of breakfast cereal notes, cookie dough notes, malty notes and also there's a buttery mouthfeel that you get in our whiskeys. Okay. So we attribute all of that to the extra bit of protein that we receive from the six-row barley. Understand. So we have outsourced it to a third-party company who procure the six-row barley for us and then they do the malting as well. Understand. All right. So, so you guys don't do the malting here. We don't do the malting okay. here at all. So malting is done by the third party agency that we have hired. Understood. And it is during malting that we decide whether the whiskey will be peated or unpeated. Unpeated. So a little bit about that when we tour the rest Understood. of the distillery. But this is just to show you where we the store, store the barley. So this okay. is a granary. So guys, everything happens here in batches and each batch consists of two tons. So this batch where it goes down to the shoot and it just goes up to let's see where it transforms from Bali to the spirit. So let's get going guys. So downstairs we saw the Bali being fed into the shoot. Yeah. So through the elevator it's taken up and the first thing that we need to do is get rid of the stones and other impurities. Okay. So we pass it through this equipment. So it acts like a vibrating screen, takes away any stones and other impurities and they also magnets in there to take away any metal. Any metal removers. Once that is done, the grain is then sent two floors up for the first process here which is milling. Milling, okay. So then now we'll head on to the yeah. other side. So we've gotten uh, the barley here yeah. and I told you we have outsourced it to a third party company for them to procure the barley and do the malting. So barley has got starch whereas we need the sugar. So to convert the starch into sugar, you need to activate the enzymes by germinating the grain. Right. And it is during that process we may we decide whether the whiskey will be peated or unpeated whiskey. Okay. So peated is nothing but your smoky flavor, unpeated is your non-smoky flavor. Correct. So how do they do the malting? They soak the grain in water, allow it to sprout and then they stop the germination at a certain point of time. Okay. So when they use hot air, 
basically that's when you get your unpeated or non smoky flavored barley so how do you know it is a non smoky it's it's so later it's how do you understand it's, it's not smoky on the nose and okay. definitely if you were to spot the difference it's definitely a little darker, a darker color sorry. as well the peated okay. barley and on the nose you can figure out okay so this is as a smoky so then you decide whether it's the peated peated or not okay. so how do we decide that with the use of peat peat so for malting like i said when we use hot air to stop the germination you get unpeated barley and for peated we import peat from scotland so peat in itself is nothing but vegetal matter Vegetal. that has partially decomposed over thousands of years thousands of years so yeah. basically found in this marshy box where you dig it out in the form of bricks you can dry it and burn it burn in the jars fuel yeah so in the malting process they soak the grain in water allow it to sprout but this time instead of the hot air they burn the peat okay so the thick smoke of the peat engulfs Infuses, the barley yeah. and stops the germination and in the bagging you get that unique yeah, right. smoky flavor okay profile so you get that barbecue smoky barbecue yeah i get that that's, that's true so now malting has been done the barley is sent to us we got rid of the stones and other impurities so the next step is for us to break the barley into parts or grind it right mill mash it yeah. all right so when we send the grain for it to be milled there's a particular ratio of the grist that we need to ensure because if we do 100% flour like texture it will tend to clog up the mill Understand. and if we do it too coarsely the water will just run through run without through. absorbing the sugar so here uh, master distiller michael when he set up the distillery he worked on multiple grist ratios and okay. finally we have settled for what you see in this jar the middle one yeah so what we need is 10% flour 20% husk and 70% coarsely ground grain so this is your entire uh, the grist ratio, grist ratio exactly. for the whiskey yeah. to get it distilled perfect okay so if we were to change it uh, even by a single percentile the flavor profile of the whiskey would completely change okay. so it is important that we pull off the same consistency with every batch so with this ratio we ensure that it doesn't clog up the mill Understand. so this 20% husk acts as an additional filter bed in the next process which is mashing but more importantly there are a lot of fermentable sugars for us to play with in this particular ratio so to get this grist ratio we use a roller mill it's got two sets of rollers we calibrate it in a way that we get the grist in this particular ratio Understood. so now we've got the grist in this ratio it's time to convert the starch into sugar, sugar and extract the sugar so how will we do that by adding in the second ingredient which is the water water Good. So this is a mash tun which okay. has a false bottom. So basically, the false bottom is perforated. There are slits and holes. That's why we will drain the water once it's got the sugar dissolved. Sugar dissolved. And you might have seen the rake. It has yeah. blades at the bottom. Keeps rotating, churns, and keeps the consistency of the mash. Okay. So now we have got two tons of barley gristed in the ratio that we were looking for, and we send it to the mash tun. Okay. And it's time to add water. So how much of it? We add about twelve thousand liters of water at four different batches. So okay, this is one batch. This is yeah. This is one batch. So the in first batch. How much uh, liters of water is it there? In this so right basically, now? right now, if we were to divide it, about three thousand liters of 3, water. Three yeah. thousand in one uh, one spatch. One spatch. So okay. first batch is at about uh, sixty-five degrees Celsius. We okay. let it spatch for an hour. Then we add water at seventy-five degrees Celsius. Then eighty-five degrees Celsius, and the fourth and the final spatch is at ninety-five degrees Celsius. Okay, so in one one uh, batch of liters. Yeah. So per batch we per add batch. about three thousand, three thousand, three thousand liters of water. Water. So at the end of it, uh, and why do we vary the temperature? Because different enzymes that's been activated during malting they activate here when we vary the temperature. Vary the temperature. And also by the time we hit ninety-five degrees Celsius, we ensure whatever little bit of sugar is left has been extracted, and whatever enzymes that help us convert the starch into sugar is also killed. Okay. So the whole process takes about five to six hours. At the end of it, we collect the sugary syrup known as the wort. Wort. So wort is what we need, and we send it to fermentation wash bag. So we are left with the husk, as you can see, a yeah. bit of the fiber and the protein. We do not have any use of it here, so we sell it to dairy farms who use it as cattle feed. Cattle feed. So we get these reports from these dairy farm owners okay. who say that after they've introduced this as a part of the diet, there's That's been right. an increased productivity of milk. Okay. So in case you're thinking we just contribute in making whiskies, no, we're also contributing in, in dairy products. In, in extra productivity okay. of milk as well. So the entire process takes about six hours five from six uh, hours. four different batches. Yeah, four five different batches. batches. Okay. So at the end of it, we collect about eleven thousand to eleven thousand five hundred liters of wort. Wort. So now it's time to convert the sugar into ethyl alcohol. Yeah. So what do we do? We'll add in the third ingredient, which is the yeast. Yeast. Okay. About that. Come in a little closer. Oh, wow. 
Very strong. Very strong, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the reaction I wanted to see. So at the end of mashing, we've collected about 11,000, 11,500 liters of water. So that's been emptied into this fermentation wash bag. So we have 14 of them. The capacities range from 16,000 to 18,000 liters. Okay. So now we've got the water in it. It's time to add yeast. So we use distiller's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and the strain of it is always a secret. Only Michael, the master distiller, would know about it. So this is directly from the... the Mashed mash. in, it's cooled down and then sent to the fermentation okay. wash bag. This is uh, without the yeast or this is with the yeast? So, this right is with the yeast right now. How, so long, how long it has been? So, this has been about 10 to 12 hours now, easily. Oh, that will, it's, oh it's yeah, very strong. strong, exactly. Okay. So, we add about 3 kilos of yeast in dry form okay. and then we let it ferment for 60 hours. 60 hours. In that 60 hours, the yeast will start breaking the sugar into ethyl alcohol, the other chemical compounds, there's carbon dioxide, there's heat because it's an exothermic reaction yeah. and more importantly, there are a lot of con Congeners being built in. Congeners are nothing but those esters that give you fruity notes. At the end of 60 hours, the percentage of alcohol is at about 6 to 6.5 percent. So primary fermentation is done, but we are not done. Not done You've yeah. tasted our whiskies, and you'd know they are very floral and very fruity. So the secret is, at the end of fermentation, primary fermentation, we let it rest for another 10 to 12 hours. After the exactly. So that's when more congeners are being built in. So this time you get notes of jackfruit, pineapple and a lot more. I'm not going to reveal all of it. I want you to tell me what you get. So, thank you sir. So at the end of 72 hours, we collect the distiller's beer or the wash. Because I'm sure you're familiar, until here, yeah. the process of brewing beer and distilling whiskey is pretty much That's similar. Alright, so now I want you to tell me how is it on the nose and the palate. Got, uh, yeah. Tropical fruits, right? Like pineapple. It's got a uh, kind of mangoish touch. Man oh, nice. Honey? Honey, wow, nice. Vanilla? 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 Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Now take a sip of it and tell me what do you get. Sour. Sour, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's sweeter on the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The finish is sort of like sweet. Sweeter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's got that uh, beery taste to it. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So the malt, yeah. it's, uh, you get the taste of the malt. Malt, yeah, perfect. But something that you could drink on its own? No. No? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. It's got a too much of sourness in that. Sourness, is it? Yeah. Perfect. So this is your distiller's beer it's right beer. now. So now the percentage of alcohol is low in this and there are a lot of chemical compounds that we do not need in our whiskey. So what we'll do is we'll distill them. So based on the boiling points, we'll manipulate and get rid of the chemical compounds that we do not need and we'll concentrate the percentage of alcohol. So, so for this that, is about uh, 6, 6 to 6.5 percent right now. Same as a beer then? Yeah, okay. much like your beer, like any craft beer. So now shall we see yeah. how to distill them. So as you're already aware, as well, uh, we use pot stills here to distill our single malt whiskey. So our whiskey is a double distill, meaning we have two sets of stills in here. We have a wash still which is of 12,500 litre capacity. Then we have the spirit still of 6,000 litre capacity. And these are our condensers. Behind them are the chillers or the coolers. And then this is the spirit safe. All right. There are two types of stills right now? Two, two types of stills. So that's the wash still okay. where the first distillation will occur. Okay. And this is the spirit still where the second or the double distillation would occur. So what's the difference between the two? So in terms of uh, definitely the shape of that uh, that you can see and the volume capacity of it as well. So that we'll get into it a little later. So we use copper pot stills here and copper is used for a lot of different reasons. One, it's a good conductor of heat. Two, copper is malleable, easy for us to work with. But more importantly, copper is known to have this property to neutralize sulfur and other off notes we may get in the distiller's beer. All right. So at the end of fermentation, we've collected about 11,000 liters of distiller's beer that's been sent into the wash still. We start heating up the contents, the contents vaporizes, then we condense it, we cool it down and the first distillate that we collect is the low wine. So low wine is full of impurities, you know, and it is also low in ABV. So the percentage of alcohol is not going to cut it for us to be, you know, sold as whiskey. So what do we do with the low wine? We send the low wine into the spirit still for it to be distilled again. Okay. Again. So we collect about 3,500 liters of low wine. Okay. So now it explains why we have a smaller spirit still as well. So 11,000 liters of distiller's beer goes in and we collect 3,500 liters of low wine 
and we send the low wine into the spirit still we start heating up the contents the contents vaporizes we condense it we cool it down and when it gets here this is the part where it gets exciting so so this spout here controls the flow of what we need to collect to become a whiskey and what we do not need at the process so, so how do you know like what you don't need right so now? basically the expression that is used is head heart and tails yeah, all right yeah. so to elaborate on that the first batch that comes out of the spirit still will still have some impurities yeah. in it yeah. so we do not need it so what do we do we move the spout towards the heads of the four shots collector so downstairs we have a four shots collector where it is collected and we forget about it for now, for now. all right so once that is done then you go yeah. to the so for every distillery there's a benchmark for what they consider their new make spirit to be or what makes the cut for them so for us there are two conditions one the percentage of alcohol must be between 55 to 70% and second and the most unique condition that we have here is that our distillers who work here they've all been trained by michael a master distiller to smell to taste and only if they feel that it's got the consistency of a regular new make spirit will they make the cut so whatever we collect here goes to the spirit receivers that we have downstairs we collect multiple batches of it and then we dilute it to about 64% abv before it sent for maturation in a wooden cask so what we have here is the new make spirit so we've already made the cut in this and after the, the after the the after the head part of it we've made the cut and towards the end of the distillation percentage of alcohol drops down and there are fusel oils which we do not need so we move it back and that's the tails part of it so the head and the tails which we do not use at the moment and the heart which ultimately becomes your whiskey yeah. all right so now you could uh, nose it you could tell me how is it on the nose yeah, yeah. and uh, do you get like raw bali or sugar cane notes a few or uh, bali yeah all Pure right bali. so uh, could you just reach out your palm and just rub both of your palms in it and just air it a bit get to the alcohol oh yeah so in today's times you know the best way to sanitize <laughs> yourself <laughs> all right but now if you were to cup it and smell it you get more notes, more notes. yeah more into the notes. oh yeah this time you get fruity notes maybe like green apples maybe jaggery sugary of. notes all of those notes right yeah. all right want to take a sip of it yeah all right cheers cheers Too raw, too too harsh. Oh, harsh. Because yeah. it's at about 66, 67% right oh, now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you feel it, right? I can feel it. It's uh, too harsh on the first note. Yeah. So now, there's no color of the whiskey that we normally associate with. And did you get the flavors that you'd normally get in your whiskeys? Not, not a lot of that, not right? All, so, where is it all coming from? Yeah. From the cask. So here we believe that 50% of whiskey is made until distillation. The rest, 50% of it, comes in the cask and then later blending. So that's where we will head now to. So how long do you all let the head flow? Do you all have See, a basically time? the whole uh, process takes about 12 hours. The distillation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It takes about 12 hours. So accordingly, we time the visits and all of that. And here. Our, our, our distillers are young operators they're trained they come here so they smell, come they smell, they yeah. smell it, taste it and all so of it's that nothing about the time. It's, all it's, about it's mostly to do with our sensory analysis on that so that's the age that we have over a lot of distilleries especially in scotland because most of them do not have the sensory analysis before they make the cut so that's the age that we have even before we send our spirit to be matured we use our sensory analysis to collect what we need so we collect only about 900 to 950 liters of spirit with every batch. So it all began with two tons of barley yeah. and ends with about 900 to 950 liters of spirit. So now we've got the spirit, let's go get our whiskies. So uh, we have about 25,000 casks at the distillery and it's divided between three cask warehouses. So we have two above ground cask warehouse and we have an underground cask cellar as well. So you have an underground as well? Underground cask cellar as okay. well. So right now we are in cask warehouse too and this house is most of our maturation casks. We also have finishing casks and experimentation casks but a little bit about that after a bit. Okay. So first we'll speak about the maturation casks in here. So our maturation casks are 200 litre American oak ex-bourbon casks. 200 litre is the volume capacity of it. And 
American oak is the wood that has been used to make this cask. Okay. So there are three types of oak to generally categorize since you're permitted to use oak only to mature your whiskey. So there's American oak, then you have European oak, and then you have the Miznura or the Japanese oak. So you're, you guys are using the American, American oak. oak. Majority of the distillers across the globe, they prefer American, American oak, oak and we prefer American oak as well. well. And the last thing that I mentioned was these are all ex-bourbon casks, meaning these casks were used by a bourbon, bourbon distillery still. before. So if you look around, you'll see cars from Jim Beam, from Jack Daniels. So they are from Jim Beam. Oh yeah, Maker's Mark, Buffalo Trace. Okay. But most of it is from Buffalo Trace that we've sourced our cars okay. from. All right. So uh, once we get it here, uh, we do not char because the practice in uh, US or for it to be known as bourbon, one of the stipulations states that the cars must be unused and charred. charred yeah. So that means they can never use a cask. So the which is a blessing for the rest of the world because it's not just us. Most of the distillers across the globe prefer ex-bourbon cars to mature their whiskies. So once we get it here, we do not char it. We just gently wash away the remnants of the previous whiskey and we pour our new make spirit into it. Okay. So we use the cars thrice in here, as in three for three fills only, first, second and third fills only. So one of the interesting things about our whiskey is that the minimum number of years that we mature our whiskey for is five years. And I'm speaking about flagship expressions and above. And whenever we talk about maturation, it is important to also understand the angel share of the place. So the amount of alcohol that we lose to evaporation every year in a cask is known as angel share. So in Scotland, they lose about 2% every year. Whereas in Goa, obviously you're from Goa, so you know the heat and humidity is definitely on the higher side and it has a much more impact on our whiskies. So we lose up to 10% every year. On an average, 8 to 10 percent every year. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? Okay. Imagine five years and losing up to 10 percent every year. That's a significant loss. loss yeah. But the same heat and humidity has also ensured that our whiskies are maturing at a rapid pace. So much so that it's been proven one year in Goa is equivalent to four years in Scotland. Scotland. So whiskey that's been matured for five years in Goa is as good as a 20-year-old Scotch. Scotch whiskey. Exactly. And that's part of the reason why we never mention the age of our whiskies on the bottles. If you've seen Paul John single malt whiskey bottles, none of them carry any the age, age statement because yeah. it's simply unfair. Yeah. You know, because you the tendency is to be biased towards a higher number on the bottle. On the bottle yeah. And if a person is not aware of this whole math of one year in Goa is equal to four years in Scotland, we'll just look at a 10-year-old Scotch as against the five-year-old Indian single malt and would prefer the 10-year-old. Ten so to avoid that bias against our own selves, we never mention the age of our whiskey. So we classify ourselves as an NAS whiskey, meaning no age statement whiskey. So a couple of interesting things that we do not do that most of the houses in Scotland they do is that most of the scotch they add color, which we do not. So whatever color you see of our whiskies, it's all natural and organic and we do not add any flavors as well into our whiskies. Yeah. And more importantly, if you've seen our labels, the whiskey bottle labels, there's something known as non-chill filtered mentioned on it. If it's not mentioned as non-chill filtered on your whiskey bottle, then most likely that whiskey has been chill filtered. Okay. So what chill, filter, chill filtration means is at the end of maturation, most of these distillers, they empty the contents of the cask into a container and they reduce the temperature. They take it to sub-zero levels. Okay. When you do that, there are a lot of chemical compounds that solidify. Turbidity occurs. So when that turbidity occurs, they pass it through a filtration device and they take out all the solid part, solid part away and pour the clear whiskey into the bottle. So some of the experts feel that 10 to 15 percent of the flavor profile is lost from what you would have tasted in the cask to what you get in the bottle. Okay. So we do not chill filter our whiskey. Do so whatever you would have tasted in the cask is exactly what you get in the bottle. So it's all natural from the, it's all, of the cask. Exactly. Apparently. Natural. Okay. So these are interesting things that we do here. So apart from these maturation casts, uh, from time and time again, we've been experimenting with multiple casts. In fact, uh, Michael D'Souza, our master distiller, uh, went to these bodegas in Spain a decade ago and he bought these historical casts that were used to mature sherries before. So we've experimented with sherry buds that were used to mature Oloroso or Pedro Jimenez. And we've also started experimenting a lot with Towny Port Wine casts, Madeira casts, some Virgin Oak casts, some French Limousine Oak casts and different other types of so casts again. So bourbon cask, you're experimenting oh, yeah, there Definitely. Well. Yeah, there's a lot of experimentation happening on happening that as, as well. As we speak, I can see. Exactly. While we're speaking, they're all maturing in maturing here. here. Probably in a couple of years, they'll bear all of the fruits Same. that we're waiting for. So now we'll head on towards the rest of the distillery. Okay. So how many casks are there in this? In uh, this uh, 6,300, in total? this warehouse yeah. alone. Okay. Guys, this is uh, Michael D'Souza, the master distiller here at Paul Jones. Michael, thanks for having us at your distillery. Pleasure.
and I'm glad to be here starting my first uh, tour with the single mold. And, uh, uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Michael D'Souza. I work as a master distiller for Paul John Single Malt. Uh, today we are here um, sampling few uh, few liquid from the casks directly from the casks. Um, we are inside the underground cellar, uh, wherein we have close to 4,000 casks. Um, here I do a lot of R and D's, uh, as in um, I have I have casks from uh, various alcohol. Uh, including Portuguese wines, Spanish wines, virgin oak, ex bourbon casks, uh, French oak casks, uh, uh, Madeira casks, etc. Uh, now I will be sampling uh, whiskey from uh, Towney, Towney Port cask. Um, Towney cask uh, is used as a finish. Um, normally we mature our whiskies in ex bourbon casks for X number of years, for example, 5 to 6 years. Later, for the finishes, we um, fill the same liquid inside wine finished casks. Uh, it could be Spanish wine or Portuguese wine casks. Today, we will be uh, sampling the Towney Port, um, which is approximately seven years old, uh, five years in ex bourbon cask, and two years in Towney Port. Okay, <clears throat> I'll be using something called Valinch, or it is also known as Whiskey Thief. been total seven years in this cask? Uh, no, five, years? two years. Two years. Okay. Yes. You can see the color here, I mean, it's more uh, towards the reddish side uh, because of the wine. Um, want to taste? Yeah. It's more on the sweeter note. I mean, uh, correct. Can you taste it? Okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. It's more related to the port wines? Yeah, first of all, it's a high ABV, means yeah. uh, the alcohol is close to 59%. Uh, um, and this is known as cast strength. Um, for the bottling, we normally use de demineralized water okay. to bring down the alcohol content. Most of our whiskeys are bottled at 46%. But again, having said that, this hasn't been bottled yet. Uh, this is at cast strength. Uh, if you see, on the nose, it's very, very sweet. A okay. uh, lot of <coughs> dry fruits. Uh, like dry resins, figs, apricot, um, dates. Uh, it is very sweet on the note as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Be this. Mm. Again, on the palate, it is very sweet and creamy. Uh, little woody. Okay. It's very nice. That's it. I mean, um, yeah, this was from the Towny port. Uh, similarly, we have um, uh, other casks kept here. You know, if you uh, could see, you know, these are these are all ex bourbon, ex -bourbon, ex -bourbon casks. Okay. These are virgin oaks. Behind this, we have uh, Spanish wine casks. Um, yeah, I mean, um, these casks are used as the limited editions. I understand. So, how how often do you use this cask? Like, is it a uh, single use, or like, how do you just uh, use it two, three times? Like well, uh, um, see, every cask is different. Um, so, some cask I can use uh, three to four times. Some sometimes it is just two. Uh, sometimes even five times, uh, depending on the cask. Okay. Um, having said that, uh, it is not that once. Um, you stop getting the aromas, uh, you discard the cask. Okay. There is something called refurbishing the cask. Uh, so we try to rejuvenate again by decharring and recharring it. Understand. Yeah. Um, this whiskey that we just sampled, is it on the peated side? It's not, is it not is it on peated or non-peated? No, this case? is um, slightly peated. Slightly peated. Yeah, it's not. I'm talking about the pit, from which region of Scotland do you import your pits from? Um, uh, we get from uh, two different regions. Uh, something called Isla and uh, Highland. Okay. Um, so mostly uh, nowadays we are getting from Highland, uh, a place called Aberdeen. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. And Michael, besides uh, the Paul Johns that you are sampling and you like uh, working over here, what is your palate? What is your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite whiskey? 
see the way i look at whiskey is different okay. for me each and every whiskey is different um because every whiskey will have its own regional characteristics correct uh, because paul john is made in goa it will have its own regional characteristics because for example our whiskies are more mineral in character because okay. goa has got tropical climate salt is in the air whiskey tend to absorb a lot of salt from the atmosphere and becomes more saltier okay so similarly you know the whiskies that comes from different areas will have its own unique characteristics so for me each and every whisky is different it is very fascinating okay yeah so my palate is more towards unpeated whiskies understand uh, yeah and uh, like uh, as paul jones uh, like why why goa like why not uh, any part of india like why goa was the hub that selected why not goa i mean goa uh, is a touristic destination um and also uh, it's a lot of history okay. um more importantly uh, to make quality whiskey you need quality water Absolutely. goa is known for quality water mm, and uh, we had uh, in our infrastructure already here okay. Uh, okay. so yeah that is the reason so that's that's what made you all to set up the distillery here Correct. in goa yeah. okay let's go so cool. thank you my yeah it was a pleasure having, having you thank you cool okay. So guys, we are back with Pankaj. Mm -hmm. As Michael has uh, already given a small sample of this whiskey here, from directly from the cask, and Pankaj will be taking on. Perfect. The tour. So uh, earlier we saw maturation cask. Yeah. Now we'll just see the different types of finishing and experimentation so cask that we have. So those are the ex-bourbon cask. Yeah, ex-bourbon cask. Yeah, okay. So now what we are looking at, these are our 500 liter butts. Okay. So these butts were used to mature uh, Oloroso before. So as you can see, these are historical casts wherein Michael, uh, Master Distiller, went to these bodegas in Spain and he handpicked these historical casts. Oh, so they are Spanish, basically. Yeah, Spanish. Spanish. So in the Jerez region, you have these uh, wines being made. So okay. Oloroso. We've also experimented with Pedro Jimenez. That I'll show you in a bit. Okay. So we are also experimenting with some towny port wine uh, butts in here. So these were used to mature yeah, towny port this wine is a before. Portuguese, uh, yeah, cask. exactly. Okay. And similarly, we have uh, our other uh, casts in here. So we have uh, these yeah, Madeira, Madeira casts as well, yeah. and we have some vintage port wine casts in here, and those marked as V would yeah. be a brand new American oak cast. So there's, those are virgin oak casts. Okay. And uh, so all this, what's, what, what I'm looking down here, they are not in the bottle yet. They're not in the bottles they're yet. The they're not in so the bottles yet. The oh yeah. yeah. So I'll show you a couple of other uh, interesting casts that we have in here as well. So these are again your ex bourbon as you can see Jim Beam and all of that mentioned on it. This is at about 59 percent right now. So these buds. <laughs> so these are your Pedro Jimenez buds. So, so these are also Portuguese? Yeah, uh, okay. not Portuguese. These are Spanish. These are Spanish. Spanish ones. Okay, okay. Pedro Jimenez is actually a type of grape. You get this sweet sherry. So these butts were used to mature uh, Pedro Jimenez before. So we use them as finishing casks in here. Understand. And uh, also interesting thing uh, we have uh, would be these 250 liter hogs heads. They are custom made uh, by Casnolia for us. So these were used to season Oloroso before and we got them here. Okay. We, were, we use them as finishing casks again. So they are Spanish as well? Yeah, they are Spanish, Spanish as well. Okay. So, in short, yeah, these are the different, uh, you know, types of casts that we have. So, from from the ex bourbon casts, you uh, put them in all these casts. Yeah. Before. So again, depends on uh, limited editions. Like Christmas edition 2018, we used the Oloroso buds. Okay. For 2019, we used the Pedro Jimenez buds. Understood. For 2020, we used Oloroso and um, you know, a combination of uh, virgin oak casts as okay. well. Okay. So, multiple experimentations, you know, for different uh, expressions again. Talking about the angel chair that was shown in the other mm -hmm. uh, cask, uh, yeah. you show, show your other cask. It does happen after you transport or uh, shift those uh, ex-bourbon to this cask? Yeah, yeah, so angel share is a constant thing. It's, yeah, a, constant no? thing. it's a constant so thing. even after shifting it from... Oh, yeah, 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 to definitely. Like See, this is the cask seller, so probably there will be a dip in terms of, uh, you know, how much we lose as against the, you know, the loss of the loss. Uh, alcohol in the above ground cask okay. warehouse. So it would be considerably lesser. Because there you are above, lesser, above ground, exactly. here you are underground. So underground. Like, does it differ? Definitely, does definitely. Differ? So there is definitely a change in the temperature, temperature. as well in here. 
So it's okay. slightly cooler than how it is in the okay. above ground cast warehouse here. So as well, I hope you had a good tour. Yes, I did. Now uh, let's taste our whiskies. So first we'll start off with Brilliance. So Brilliance has been matured for about five to six years uh, here in Goa. It's bottled at 46%, non-chill filter. And uh, we'll try something different today. Usually I'm the one who gives the notes and on the nose and the palate. So today we'll switch sides. You'll tell me how is it on the nose and the palate and the rest of the... All right, cool. So guys, as you can see, uh, where we started, we sing from the water to see uh, what it comes out in the glass. And this is what it is after, after it was matured in the cask. And well, this is the first uh, whiskey, which one is it? It's the uh, brilliance. brilliance. Okay, so you want me to test Oh yeah, tell me how is it on the nose first. It's got a sweeter fragrance. Oh yeah. Uh, honey and a uh, bit of hint of spice. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I still get that malty, okay. uh, the barley. True, true. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit on the coffee side. You're getting, okay, coffee ounces, eh? Uh, a bit, uh, okay. Uh, that's a bit difficult. <laughs> A touch of uh, chocolate. Chocolate, yeah, for sure. And overall, like a spicy finish to it, it as does, well, it right? It does have a spicy yeah. uh, finish to it. Correct. Some like fruity on the nose, malty on the palate, and like a spicy finish it, to it. I'm getting vanilla as well. Vanilla, very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of vanilla. And this is uh, bottled at 46, right? 46 percent, yes. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of vanilla. Yeah. Then, Wow. So, okay guys, we find the Brilliance, which is bottled at 46% alcohol, and uh, well, it's a good one. Alright. It's too crunchy. Oh yeah. On the palate. Palate, very crunchy. Very crunchy. Alright. Yeah. So, now, Brilliance is completely unpeated. So we have a whiskey called Edited. So the whole idea behind it is like a master distiller wanted to introduce peat to a palate that's never tried peat before. So if it's yours is a palate that has never tried peated whiskeys before and you try a peaty whiskey, it could be a turn off. Okay. So to familiarize your palate with what peat could taste like or smell like, we've got Edited. So basically it's bland, uh, it's a bland with uh, the peat, you would say? Yeah, I would say it's got a hint of peat, hint of peat. just to you know familiarize your palate with what Peat could taste like. So again, bottled at 46% and still non-chill filtered. And you know the drill now. Yeah. Again, an instant of uh, nose of honey. Honey, all right, nice. Uh, fruity fragments again on the nose. Okay. And I do get the smokiness. Oh yeah, the, the PT. Uh, yeah. I think before I try the edited, I like to have some water to rinse my palate. All right, sure, yeah. we we'll get that for you. Yeah. Perfect. Instant flavor of barley. Barley, yeah. It's directly like the raw it's barley, raw you know, barley. yeah. It, it, it instantly hits your palate. And there's a lot of mocha, espresso, coffee notes, and spices. A spice as of mint. Mint as well, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, edited uh, was rated at 96.5 when it was launched. Okay. Initially, so yeah, I heard it was a highly rated. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Whiskey. So edited uh, is sort of like what put us on the global map in the year 2013 when mm -hmm. it was uh, rated at 96.5. Okay. 
on uh, Whiskey Bible uh, by Mr. Jim Murray. So, yeah. And I, I get the finish note of a pit. Pit, right? A yeah. total pit. It's pit, like yeah. uh, it's the color check there. Yeah. The finish is a total pit. Oh, yeah. The back of your throat, you get that kind of peaty kind of finish, finish, smoky finish. It yeah. Does have it. So now we're going to up the ante on peat. Okay. So we're going to take a bolder approach towards peat. That's why you have the bold. So bold is the entire peaty whiskey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bold has got, uh, it's a 100% peated, peated whiskey. So this time we've uh, used peat from Isla region uh, for bold. So for a lot of folks who prefer, uh, you know, pairing cigars with their whiskies, I would always suggest uh, the, bold. the bold one. Oh, you're very smoky, very leathery, very, you know, tobacco-ish. A lot of smoky. Oh, yeah. It's totally. A hint of honey? Honey, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Again the malt, again the peated. Of course. It's more on the peated side. Peated, right yeah. It's more on the peated side. It's more on the smoky flavor. In ham, those smoky notes is a smoked meat. It's totally smoky. Yeah. It, it gives a finish of the copper. Oh, you get that copper. The copper yeah, yeah. See? But it's got the sweet notes also on the palate, like honey, like almost. And coats your palate. It, but it's a hidden, oh, yeah. hidden in the entire thing, so it's more of a smoky flavor. Yeah. So, so three different. How, so tell me how did I do? Hang yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did good, you know. And it's all subjective, you know. So there's nothing called as right or wrong when you're tasting whiskeys, you know. So that's what you perceive the whiskeys to be. So you're right in your own way. Okay. Yeah. But good. So I uh, hope you like the whiskeys as well. I love the whiskeys. The tour was excellent. Oh, thank you and so much. It was nice to see how uh, water is turned into whiskey. Oh, yeah. See and it. the entire process from the barley, then into the maturation, the, maturation, the task, and then the bottle. Oh, yeah. So okay. it's, a great, it's a great, it's a great, uh, oh. it's a great uh, honor and privilege to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much as well and it was a complete pleasure having you and uh, you know yeah, showing you. you around and sipping on some whiskeys with you. So, so thank you. And thanks again. Thank as well. thank so, a huge thanks to Paul Jones and if there is any distilleries that you would like to visit drop me a comment below let me know which distillery you want me to visit next and if there are any distilleries that would like to feature in the series DM me on Instagram. Thanks for watching if you like the video leave a like subscribe and that's a wrap for the video peace